Hello and welcome to episode 31 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Matt. What's going on this week? Well, for starters, Matty G's sitting in with us. Oh, that's right. Oh, well, welcome, guys. <laughs> right, is that for Movember? Uh, oh, the beard? Yeah. I uh, just uh, decided winter was coming, so I'm going to grow the beard out. Winter's coming. Winter's coming, yeah. Looking for him. <laughs> I'm growing mine out for November. Yeah. yeah. Are, is, are you? And have you been doing it since the first? Are you well, like, the, it's like the first week or a couple of days after the first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shave it though, like tomorrow. It like, sucks, huh? <laughs> you have to get used to it. It's itchy. I, oh. I did that, uh, that dollar a month racer thing. How was that? Pretty good. You got it and everything? Uh, yeah. Uh, you got the Gillette Fusion Pro Glides? Yeah, it's uh, four blades, and uh, is it the Pro Glide ones though? What do you mean by that? Is there Gillette <laughs> Fusion? No, uh, it is Pro Glide. The Fusion vibrates, or is that the turbo? That's the turbo. Uh, what's the difference? The Pro Glides are a lot smoother shave, a lot they glide a lot easier. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know if the Pro Glides are on there, or is it just Fusion? It's neither. It's their own brand. I'll say it's oh, so not, not a different brand, brand anymore. Yeah. Oh, so it's not Gillette Fusion Pro Glides? No, it's Dollar Shave Month Club. Uh, I thought you said... They have some pretty cool commercials, don't yeah. they? Yeah. And it's funny because when I ordered like a week and a half ago, uh, it wouldn't process my order, so I'm like, whatever. And then I get an email saying, hey, uh, sorry, your website wasn't working. Our, your, our, your first month is free on us. So uh, I got that huh. in the mail. It's literally only a dollar. Well, it's there's three different kinds. The dollar one is uh, two bladed. You have five two blades. Uh, then the f I got the four blades, which is six dollars, and they have six blades for nine dollars. Four blades. It is. Do you remember that old Mad TV skit where yeah, they exactly. had the twenty blade razor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, that's what uh, I was thinking about it. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, switching gears here, there is this girl at work sits next to me, and she said, "I have a Wii. Can I just buy the U instead of getting the whole system?" <laughs> <What a mom. laughs> and she was talking to her coworker. I, I bet said, you she was dead serious too. <laughs> she was, and I said, "That's like me saying, hey, I have a Nintendo. Can I just buy the Super?" <laughs> <laughs> And she uh, she didn't think that was funny, but I thought it was funny, and Daniel, my coworker, thought it was hilarious. Did she think the U was just like a controller or something? I don't know or what she thought. Tablet, maybe or whatever. And they uh, do you want to share that with Mike because it'll pick up better. Okay. And then Matt yeah, could just have that one close to him. Okay. And uh, Cheesecake Factory, did you hear about this? About what? No, I guess not. Uh, what are you talking about? Tim Wilson goes there occasionally. Oh, are you talking about the IS? Uh, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? No, no, no. Um, he uh, sent me a message via Facebook and said, you made me look like an asshole. They don't have Vietnamese tacos anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't tell me about that. I was hecka disappointed. I, <laughs> I was like, oh, that heck of sex. I'm going to write him a letter. Well, I don't go there very often, but I, the one time I did go there was for like a work lunch type thing. And I didn't see it on the menu, but I did see something called like Korean tacos. And I thought that's what you were referring to, but I didn't try them. Before. It is. It's Korean tacos. Yeah. It's not Vietnamese tacos. Oh, so maybe <laughs> the waiter was just like, we don't have that. But, she's, but the waiter said, we don't have that anymore, and yeah. they hit it one time. Yeah, that's true. Confusing. we got to get more clarification. <laughs> <laughs> game of the week. Who's been playing video games? I played for a couple hours last night. Um, actually, I guess I'll just tell a short story about my night last night. So uh, last night, my cousin, Zach McBee, had a wedding reception. Matt, Matt Gerber was there with me, our uh, boy sitting in today. Uh, we didn't get the invite. No. 
important than that. No, it's family really only. Yeah. So uh, dur during the uh, reception, Matt comes up to me and says, "Hey, you want to go do it over to my brother's house and play some Munchkin later tonight?" And he's like, "Oh man, I was gonna play my game tonight. This is like the first time I've had a chance this week." But then I was like, "Oh, it's been a long time since we played Munchkin, so I definitely want to take take advantage of this." So I ended up going over there. We started playing Munchkin over at his brother's place around 10:30 at night. After a bunch of bullshit with Brian, and he takes the Munchkin game very seriously. His, the goal of the game for him is to be Munchkin lead and <laughs> basically get under everyone's skin, which he's very good at. So after he ends up winning a couple of games, we, I go home. By the time I get home, it's like 2 a.m. Like, oh man, I gotta play my game. So I ended up playing for a few hours. Oh, I played Lucia too up until like <laughs> 5 in the morning. Man. But it was worth it. It was it was good times. So um, the last time we recorded, I was uh, in the Shrine of Vengeance. I'm still trying to track down. Um, not Gage. Amon. Thank you. Well, I'm playing it. I should know. It. I really should. <laughs> yeah, Amon. Uh, but uh, so I saved it in the the temple, uh, or excuse me, the Shrine of Vengeance, thinking that I was about to fight Amon. Mm -hmm. Uh, what who I run into is this thing called the Vengeance Ghost, and the Vengeance Ghost is basically a ghost who's compiled of a bunch of you know disturbed souls, souls that are not at rest, I guess. So anyway, as I was saying, uh, the, my party fights the Vengeance Ghost. We end up winning, of course. Um, and after you beat the Vengeance Ghost, the the ghost is just kind of sitting there, and you're like, well, why isn't it going away? And Artie, the elf in my group right now, Artea or Artie, he does some sort of thing and he sets him free. He says, and he mentions something that they need to learn the sacred truth in order to be truly free. And the party's like, what, is, what do you mean sacred truth? And no one, I guess they get caught up in the moment and they just end up leaving. Uh, also, while they're there, uh, they run into Iris. Iris is this mysterious character who keeps showing up. She's, she's kind of like a soothsayer. She kind of leads the, pat, the 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 whole party on what the journey that they're on. And she mentions, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I actually skipped a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna backtrack. So the the thing that I was talking about, okay, so so basically the way that that, that it ended. Uh, Iris uh, shows up and she she challenges uh, the love of Maxim and Salon or Selene, however you want to say her name, and she says in order to find out whether or not your your love is true, you have to go to this Tower of Truth. So they go to the the Tower of Truth and um, let's see how, how does that how does that end up resolving? Do you remember? Yeah. Go ahead. So the, you end up going through the Tower of Truth, and I think you fight a boss. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to figure, figure out who the boss was. Oh, it was just like three white dragons. That's what it was. Yeah. They, they end up like uh, ambushing you, basically. So Maxim and Selene go into this Tower of Truth, and basically you're supposed to look into a mirror, and if you see yourselves, it means that you're true to yourself and that you are meant for each other. And Iris convinced them that, that they need to do that in order to be truly sure that they, their love for each other is true. So you're hunting down these t these uh, Sinistrals, and she's like, wait, we got to find out if we really love each other. Iris is very mysterious. <laughs> I, I still don't know what her, her end game is. You learn a little bit about about Iris at the at the end of this story. So they, they go into this room where this, where this mirror is, and then they have a little uh, dialogue where they're like, I don't care what's in the mirror. I know my love for you is true. I don't need to look in the mirror. And at that point, that's when uh, these three white dragons ambush them. They ambush the party, and they end up fighting them. But in, in the ambush, you can see that the Iris and Ma or excuse me, Maxim and Salon back up and in the mirror, and they have their backs turned to the mirror, and you can see the reflection, so you, you know... That what they don't know that their love truly is meant for, they're truly meant for one another so after be beating these uh white dragons <clears throat> the uh mirror gets shattered they end up leaving the uh leaving the tower of truth and then iris reappears in the tower of truth and she looks into the mirror and you can see uh it's another character it's not it's not anyone anyone that resembles iris at all it's uh what she says is uh, something about Sir Eric, which in that opening scene, uh, there's a part, there's a, there's a Sir Eric who's, who seems to be somewhat of the leader of the Sinistrals, I guess. And that's kind of where I left off. What she says is, 
only when one of them is gone will we know for sure. I, I'm guessing, I'm not sure exactly what she means by that. That, that, that. There's so much weird stuff going on in the game, and I, I hope eventually they'll all get, get answered, but that's where I'm at right now. It sounds like she, one of them needs to die in order for her to figure something out, but I don't know what. So that's where I'm at right now. So uh, my game of the week, uh, Tells of Destiny. I'm giving up on it. Oh wow! Yeah, I kind of figured you would. Uh, it's I can't. It's, it's not catch grabbing me. I gave it a few tries. Uh, plus, I've got something big coming Wednesday, so <laughs> it, that game's not going to have a chance. I'm getting the new 3DS XL bundle mm. for Zelda. Mm. Brad and I are both getting it on the same day. I'll get it first though, because I'm going to work from home Wednesday. Nice. So I'll send him a send him a picture of me kissing it. <laughs> unless uh, unless mine I get off at three thirty now unless mine comes up four and it comes up six maybe that yeah we'll see we'll is see it, what happens is it getting sent in the mail or do you guys don't yeah. pick up UPS yeah. it's actually I think it's on the same truck because it left the same location at the same time and it's sitting at Illinois at the same time so it's probably on the same truck yeah well it's a new game right yeah I saw the uh, an ad for it or something like that yeah that's cool. Does the Wii U have a new Zelda game? Not yet. It has a remake of Wind Waker. They made it HD. Mm, okay. Which is a very underrated game. Mm. People don't like it because of the cell shaded link, the tune link, but it's still a great game. It is. It's really fun. Anybody else have any tells? No, I've just been playing Pokemon. That's going to sit on the back burner when I get Zelda. Yeah. Matt? Um, yeah, I, I played uh, Batman Arkham City a little bit. I haven't played that game for a while and realized I hadn't beat it. Um, I, I beat the story mode, but I don't want to spoil it. Brad hasn't played it yet, um, and now I'm just going around trying to do the side missions as Catwoman and stuff. And it's kind of cool because you can tag in and out as Catwoman and Batman and stuff. I bet you like playing as Catwoman. <laughs> She's got some good moves. <laughs> Pretty acrobatic. You know, it's really tight in Arkham City. Is when you uh, did you find the um, the little Easter egg where uh, the Wayne parents are dead? Uh, I don't think I don't know. It's I've, behind the theater. I don't think mm. I did. It's heck tight. You, is it a mission or is it something you no, just find? No, you just find it. I was, I was actually thinking about, ooh, I'm going to see if the theater's in there and I'm going to go there. Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool little scene. Yeah, and I didn't even think to like check out that spot, but I know they died in the theater and stuff. But right now, I'm, I'm trying to find uh, the Riddler. I'm trying to like question people to find out like whereabouts of the Riddler's riddle and stuff like that. Mm. So, just kind of going, going for that. Best Riddler ever, Jim Carrey. Uh, <laughs> isn't he like the only one besides the, the, the TV show? Yeah. TV series? <laughs> uh, I wasn't there a rumor that there was going to be a new the new Batman with a, a Riddler in it or something. I thought. Uh, I know wait, when the Dark Knight was coming out, they said that They're Joseph Gordon Levitt was going to be the Riddler. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, but that was just a huge rumor. Yeah, because obviously he's speculation would be like the new Robin or, or Red Hood or something like that, yeah. right? Yeah. So what kind of top five do we have? Or are we doing treasure hunting? Oh, yeah, we do have to do treasure hunting, huh? I could go do mine first. It's not anything that... It's no video games. It's just uh, some pretty cool treasure I found. Is it a bottle of Hennessy again? <laughs> no. He left a big old bottle of empty Hennessy in my garage. My wife found it. She was like, what is that? <laughs> it's huge. It was like one of those like gallon jugs. Oh, nice. Here's the first one. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. Greatest stars of the 90s. That's cool. Yeah, it's three ninety nine at Dimple. Oh, that's hecka cheap. So, so what would be better than the greatest 90s stars? 80s. Oh. Yes. yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, that's four ninety nine. Yeah. That's better. And then... The Rise and Fall of ECW. That's tight. Is that a documentary? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Do they reseal these or? Yeah. Okay. I saw them do it. They have like a uh, plastic and then they use a blow dryer. Yeah. Okay. What you got? Oh, so you I don't have, have any actual have treasure? Hole. So do you know what this is? Yeah, that's a DS light cord, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit. This oh is my that goodness. Guy. <laughs> oh. 
That's tight. Where'd you see, find this at? That was that thing I had to meet with that guy. <laughs> Those come off. I haven't. I just haven't cleaned it up yet. It was some kid. How old was he? Uh, Fifteen. Yeah. You might want to explain what it is for oh. the listening audience. <laughs> it's a uh, DS. It's a Nintendo DS Lite, but it's a special edition Legend of Zelda the version. The Phantom Hourglass mm -hmm. one. And he's got a whole bunch of stupid stickers. It's all Angry Birds and uh, I don't know what the other stuff is. What is that? The um, Dork? What is it? Um, Dork Tower? No, it's the uh, fifth grade. The Tales of a Wimpy Kid. Diary of yeah, Kid. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Stickers. How old was this kid again? 15, I think. How'd he get one of those? His parents bought it for him. And you paid 35 bucks for it? Because <laughs> looking online, you get it for like 120 so we could at least double our money yeah. with that. So. No game with it? No. Oh, okay. So it was on the yard sale, you said? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was that one or the cobalt blue one. Well, they're selling both for 35 so I picked that one. Wow. And even though they don't have the gold stylus pin, they have the Game Boy slot thing, which is hard oh. to come by. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. A lot of them don't have that. It's cool. I thought it was some Super Nintendo lot or something. No, I know you did, but I was like, it's, it's <laughs> not that great. I mean... Basically, just limited edition cake. Now, yeah. now, piggybacking on this, it's time for the punishment. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't agree about that. We did, we did not talk about any type of punishment. I'm not getting hit in the nuts or corn dog. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> bring, bring out your giant wheel, and then we'll talk. No. We'll have to rip up papers again. <laughs> I know. I started a punishment list. It's on my computer. Okay. But it's not complete. Are you guys behind on your punishments or something? Yeah, the list keeps getting lost. So then Nick <laughs> came up with a brilliant idea to <laughs> save it on the computer. So we'll always have it with us. Brandon was like, can you can you get your list laminated? And I was like, no, that'd be too much work. It'd still get lost. And then Nick was like, yeah, because it's so hard to save something on the computer. And then a light bulb went off. <laughs> Did you get 29 down? It's up? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's on me to fire. Okay. So top five this week, huh? Yep. What's our top five? Top five wrestling superstar tag teams. Just because we watch Survivor Series, which was pretty good. Better than Night of Champions. Battleground? Was it better than Battleground? Yep. <laughs> The ending, they, they keep on doing this interference where tri where someone walks out like Triple H and just stare at the wrestler, and they're so dumbstruck, they get so stupid, <laughs> and they get hit by a finisher and loses. I was like, come on. That's like happened three times now. Yeah. On a pay-per-view. Yeah. All right. So uh, I could start. Let's see. Number five, I'm going to go with Hardy Boys. Uh, even though they're kind of sorry individually, they together they do some death-defying stunts and brought a whole new level to wrestling. Uh, I didn't put them on my list because they spoke boys with a Z. Right, they did. <laughs> and they were like fishnet shirts. Sorry to yeah. you, but yeah, that's why one reason I never liked those <laughs> shirts. Uh, Jeff Hardy was just insane. He uh, outshined his brother... By far. Was that that was a blonde one, right? Mm. Yeah, when he did that Swanton bomb off the Teletron. Oh man. That was amazing. That guy's crazy. So that was my number five. Which way are we going? I don't matter. I'll go. Matt called it. Real, <laughs> Real Americans are on my list. Real Americans are number five on my list. Uh I guess the uh, they're not, they haven't been around for very long. They never won a championship. I just love watching them. They're managed by this guy named Zeb Coulter. He's got this wicked m mustache, and he's got these crazy ideas about what it means to be American. He just he, he's a he's basically the very definition of a heel. He, he, he takes a microphone no matter where they're at, and he'll just talk trash about whatever city they're in. It's it's so freaking funny. And we were talking about this tonight. 
no matter where they're at, he can say whatever he wants about that city. And for some reason, the, the whole crowd still cheers for him. I think it's because they all, everyone realizes that it's a joke, and it's it, it really is. It's so freaking funny, the stuff that he says. But on top of that, um, I really like Antonio Cesaro. I think he's a really good good wrestler. He has a lot of innovative uh, moves that he does. The Cesaro swing is getting really popular. I, I, I love that move. It's so entertaining to watch him swing, swing you know, huge 300, 400-pound men in circles. It's so funny. He also does this move where he'll uh, throw, throw, throw his opponent straight up into the air. And as they're coming down, he does like this tiger uppercut type thing and <laughs> hits him on the jaw. It should be a finisher, but it doesn't really finish people off very often. Uh, Jack Swagger, the uh, tag team, or the, the other member of the tag team, kind of boring. He's basically just a brutish type guy. I, I think he was the uh, heavyweight champion at one time. But he doesn't really do anything other than run people over. He also has this uh, submission called the Patriot Lock that he uses, which is pretty powerful. He usually finishes people off. But that's my number five. He took that from uh, Kurt Angle yeah. with his ankle lock. Uh huh. It's basically the same thing. Um. So for my list, uh, I didn't watch wrestling a whole bunch growing up, so I don't. I don't really remember. Uh, tag teams as far as like matches they've done and all that I'll just remember things that like stuck out to me as a kid um, so the first one uh, was uh, I have DX was uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels um, just because uh, I remember everyone with the whole DX movement all the kids at school saying suck it <laughs> I don't think I've only seen a couple couple episodes with them on it but it just was obviously really influential and I know them separately, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, but I didn't get to watch too much of that. So that's why I, I listed them down at five. But uh, I thought that one was they were pretty good. So. Cool. So my number five is going to be the Real Americans as well. <laughs> my favorite insult that Zeb threw out there was when they were in <laughs> Manchester or in England, and he goes, "You got this coming from a bunch of people who find Mr. Bean funny." <laughs> <laughs> Jim McCovery, we should take offense to that. <laughs> I actually think Mr. Bean's pretty funny, too. Go ahead. Yeah, but that insult like, just had me cracking up. He also said that Canadians were a bunch of border jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder what he's going to say in Arizona or San Diego. Oh, man. <laughs> he said some pretty w- wicked stuff in uh, Los Angeles, even in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. He doesn't so, have... Yeah, it's like he doesn't have a sense or he tries to... Get people not to like them. <laughs> that was a, I think the first time we had even heard about them, Nick and I were at a live event, and this guy comes out and starts saying all this stuff, and we're like, what the heck is this guy saying? Because like, exactly at that time, you're going off tangents of like uh, Mexican immigrants and stuff like that, and it's kind of in California. I mean, it's a pretty big big uh, topic, you know, whether you're, you know, what side you're on, but it just was it's kind of like, what's wrong with these guys and as it goes on? Yeah. It was heck of fun. Pretty hilarious. Uh, number four on my list is going to be the Mega Powers, Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage. Nice. Uh, growing up as a little kid, you're waiting for these two to come together as one, and they finally do in WrestleMania four. But it uh, goes downhill pretty fast. <laughs> All over a misunderstanding. <laughs> Macho Man gets very jealous. Of Hulk Hogan because well, Elizabeth shouldn't have been hanging on him like that. <laughs> well, she was knocked out. <laughs> no, even before that, the build-up, she was always like getting on his biceps and yeah, he was always picking her up. Yeah, <laughs> so Elizabeth should have stayed away from that. Yeah, that's true. And so in WrestleMania five, they uh, or the build-up for WrestleMania. Oh, I was trying to set up. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, even though the Mega Powers wasn't too, didn't uh, hold together too long, uh, WrestleMania Five is when it was Macho Man against Hulk Hogan, and you didn't know who Elizabeth was rooting for. She went to a neutral corner and didn't root for, she rooted for both of them. You do, do you remember who they fought when the misunderstanding took place? Oh, was it the Natural Disasters? The Twin Towers. Oh, okay. With Akeem and Big Boss Man. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, of course, Hulk Hogan beats Macho Man, and, uh, that was the end of that. Yes. 
Uh, so my number four is Christian and Edge. Yes. You heard my little sneak preview there. Um, they were the they won the tag team title seven times, and the beginning of their uh, oh, tag seven team seven times seven wow. seven time tag team title. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, they were billed as uh, being brothers, but you later learn that they're not brothers. They're they're just lifelong friends, which to me I think is like even cooler, really, because I mean brothers. You don't, you don't really have a choice in that. <laughs> you, you you have a brother, and that's your brother. But friends, you choose. So I thought it was really cool. They were actually were lifelong friends, and they ended up being uh, tag team champions together. You know they were at, uh, at WrestleMania 6 together? You can see them in the... Uh, oh, games. really? Yeah. That's heck of tight. Uh, you see Edge with the mullet. It's heck of funny. No, I hadn't heard that. I just found out about it yesterday. Uh, the other thing that I really liked about it is was the, the song after Christian and Edge split. His theme was one of the coolest themes that I've ever heard. I'm going to play a little little bit of it just to be uh, different. See if I can get this to work. So that first part, it just every time I heard that, it just made me smile so so freaking wide, just because it's just a, sil a silly introduction to a theme, and then it does this cheesy guitar lick, and then it, uh, about thirty seconds in, there's another uh, kind of operatic part. You uh, bear with me for a second. I think it's coming up here. So that's my number four is Christian and Edge. They always used to talk trash. Yeah. They were a good team. Like I said, I really think it's cool that they are uh, they were really good friends and they, uh, they ended up being tag team champions together. <clears throat> All right. My number four uh, is kind of an unlikely duo. Um, I felt that their uh, personalities were quite opposite, so that's what made them pretty funny to see. Uh, as a rock and sock connection. Oh, that's my number two. All right, <laughs> I'll just I'll just do a little bit of the the intro, and then you can take the rest on number two. But uh, it was just they're formed in 1999 when Undertaker and Big Show attacked The Rock, uh, leading The Rock to challenge them both on. Uh, everybody basically thought there's no way you can win, you know, against those two by yourself. So uh, mankind came and said, "Oh, you know, I'll help you out," and The Rock reluctantly uh, agreed and. And then after uh, t two uh, people's elbows won the match, and uh, <laughs> they went on to fight a few more. And then, uh, yeah, they, they used to hit a people's elbow, huh? They did. Yeah, yeah. The double, yeah. Yeah, double people's elbow, yeah, exactly. So I uh, thought that was pretty funny. Um, I, I saw a little bit of that in the, um, the documentary I watched on Man mm -hmm. Down. It was pretty cool. So um, that's, that's all I'll say on that, and I'll let you say more. Number, you're number two. That was my number four. My number four is going to have to be the Strike Force. Oh, jeez. <laughs> With Tito Santana and Rick Martel. <laughs> They're a heck of tight. <laughs> um, Tito Santana had the Flying Forearm and Rick Martel had the Boston Crab. Uh, then they went their separate ways, ways and Rick Martel became arrogant. He was the model. And he was all buff and had his arrogant spray. Well, it's called um, it was called arrogance, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in an aerosol can, like the cartoons. Yeah, and he's all used to spray people with it. Yeah, so that was a KO move right there. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my number four. My number three was the Rockers. Yeah, do you have that on there? That's my number three. Oh, okay. Uh, Marty Janetti and the far superior Shawn Michaels. Uh, Started out, uh, they're r really the first high flyers out there. Um, you no, know, everyone just thought that they would fail based on their size, and uh, Shawn Michaels ended up proving them wrong. Uh, the the best part of that whole relationship is when Shawn Michaels turned bad and super kicked Marty Jannetty through the glass window at uh, Brutus and Barber Beefcake's uh, barber shop. Yeah. Uh, and he was all bloody and everything, and Shawn Michaels had on this black leather jacket, and you're like, how can he do this? And Marty Jannetty came back and tried to fight him. 
He was he like had a heart attack mid fight. <laughs> he was out wrestled uh, by Shawn Michaels. He was out wrestled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shawn Michaels uh, got the uh, sensational Sherry as his manager. She got around because she was Macho Man's manager. She was too. scary Sherry, and then she was sensuous Sherry for Ric Flair in WCW or WCW. But uh, let's get back to Shawn Michaels. He was just the man. Mm -hmm. That's when the super kick was formed, right? When he, yeah, when sweet he chin music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the best finishers out there. When he was in the, uh, he'd be in the corner of the ring stomping his foot, and you'd hear, he's tuning it up. <laughs> he's tuning it <laughs> up. That would have that dropped John Cena like a ton of bricks. Oh, man, that dropped anybody. Big show. <laughs> it took all of their hit points away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so rockers. All right, my number three is the uh, current tag team champions, Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes. Another uh, brother duo, and this time they actually are brothers. I believe they're half-brothers. Um, I mean, I, I've really gotten into wrestling just within the last year or so. And for me, two of the best moments for, for WWE this year was when Goldust and Cody Rhodes beat The Shield to get their jobs back. Cody Rhodes had been fired. Goldust had been out of uh, WWE for a while. So they won this big match. Uh, I, I believe it was at was it Night of Champions. Or may, oh, it was Battleground. Battleground, they, they, they won their jobs back from uh, The Shield. And then after that, uh, just a week or two later, on an episode of Raw, I believe it was, they beat The Shield again for, to, to win the tag team, championship, uh, cha tag team championship. And like I said, th those were just two of the most uh, exciting moments uh, of the last year for wrestling. So I give it up to them big time. Uh, I mean, Gold, Goldust is just a really interesting character. I love the way he fights. I love his, his whole appearance. I really like the way he's doing his uh, face paint now. It's kind of like it got a Darth Maul look to it. And I'm a little upset that Cody Rhodes doesn't wear the Triforces on his boots anymore, but maybe someday it'll come back. So that's my number three. So um, if you, like, drop a pen or something and you're, like, in a hurry, do you stop and pick it up? If I myself drop a pen, mm -hmm. probably, yeah. Uh, is there any, and why do you pick it up? Because I'm a cheapskate and I don't like wasting things. <laughs> Would you stop and pick up a pen? No, I wouldn't. Okay, <laughs> you, just, you just keep walking. Is that up. the answer you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> like, Matt, like, if like some of your, like, you're, you know, scratching your beard now and you're outside and like a piece of your hair fell you wouldn't think twice about it, right? You'd be like, whatever. A hair? Yeah. No, yeah. Not at all. Right. So I was talking to my daughter. Uh, <laughs> um, we were driving in the car. And you, you've, seen, you've all seen Clerks too, right? Yeah. You remember when uh, um, Elias is talking about pillow pants? Yeah. The stare that Randall gives Elias? Yeah. That is how I was looking at Nausea in the rearview mirror. She told me she... If she drops anything, even a piece of hair, she picks it up. And I said, why? And she said, because if I drop a pen, it has my fingerprints on it, and someone will use it to find out where I live or where I go to school and kidnap me. Oh, man. And same with the hair. She, she said, they'll run a DNA That's test, true. and they will find out where I live, and they'll take me away. And I, I told her, I, I, could, I, I said, you're crazy. I said, don't talk, don't think like that. I said, you just worry so much. She said she'll never go to San Francisco again because of she just found out about the 1989 earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, do you know what happened on 9-11? She said, don't tell me. I said, people hijacked planes and flew into buildings. She's like, no, I never want to fly again. <laughs> I'm like, you're crazy. So why was this supposed to come up with the gold dust? It wasn't. He just out of it. Yeah. So my number three. <laughs> uh, my number three, I picked uh, The Outsiders. Uh, Diesel, Razor Ramon uh, was what they were, uh, they were before. And it was uh, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall when they left uh, WWF. Their contracts were up. They appeared on WCW. And uh, they were known as Outsiders. 
you know, the, through the devil horn symbol, the wolf pack. <laughs> um, obviously, with uh, Hollywood Hogan, they started the whole NWO movement, which I also just watched a documentary on. Basically, it became bigger than WCW, and, and that was actually the reason they fall because it got too big too quick. But uh, the Outsiders were really one of the starters of that, and I thought they were pretty cool. And I liked that. Did they have that that theme music when they were the Outsiders the, with the Wolf Pack? Doom, doom, doom. Oh yeah, yeah. Was that when they were Outsiders too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that theme music was pretty sweet. So, so Outsiders were my number three. And X Pac. Yeah. He, he was one, two, three kid, then six, and then X Pac and Degeneration X. Yeah. Guy mm -hmm. has too many identities, like Scary Sherry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you guys know my number three, the Rockers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to add anything? No. I added what I wanted to. Okay. So the Rock and Sock Connection, it was hilarious how mankind had to petition the Rock to have him, allow him to help him. Uh, after, after like five attempts, the Rock was just like, all right, you could join me. And he was like the biggest Rock fan. It was hilarious to see Mick Foley running around with a Rock shirt on and uh, doing his version of the people's elbow and trying to do the eyebrow and him even him drawing an eyebrow on Socko. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> Alright, so my number two is the Road Warriors. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have them as my two number, or one? No nope. number one, but I don't have a lot to say. So right a rush. <laughs> is that what they used to do? Yeah. That was our entrance. Uh, so, you know, most people know the Road Warriors, um, also known as Legion of Doom, of, co of course. Uh, Hawk and Animal, uh, they had just an amazing look. Uh, they had the, the big shoulder pads with the spikes coming out of it. They had the mohawks. They had the awesome face paint. Um, I guess uh, I wasn't a huge WWF fan uh, during this time, but in 2003, one of the, tech, one of the members, Hawk, passed away. And um, Animal would actually team up with a, this guy named uh, Heidenrich. Hmm. You, are you, are you familiar no. with this? He teamed up with this guy named Heidenrich after about six months after uh, Hawk had passed away. And uh, he made him an honorary Legion of Doomer. Oh, he ended wow. up winning the Tag Team Championship. Uh, they didn't, it didn't last very long. It was kind of one of those sentimental things that WWF does whenever, you know, someone has something traumatic happen to him. It's kind of a feel-good moment type of thing. Um, but they were, they're, uh, they're Hall of Famers for a good reason. They were, they were around for a good 15, 20 years. And like I said, their look was just amazing, and they, they were great wrestlers as well. So that's my number two. I remember one match they had. It was in WCW. They actually had two rings side by side. <laughs> And uh, I don't know who they're facing, but that was the first time I ever saw that. Probably the first and the last. But it was crazy to see them running through two things of road. I saw Rick Flair fight in one of those. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, so my number two um, was another one that was kind of more of like a, I just for some reason as a kid, I remembered it. And I would, I would walk around like it. Even though I didn't watch wrestling that much, I, I remember the Bushwhackers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> their forearms, just throwing their forearms over their head, bobbing their head back and forth, going crazy. Uh, they'd like lick, like lick each other, their, their <laughs> opponents and stuff. And um, So I was just reading about them a little bit before this. Uh, they were originally known as the Kiwi uh, Sheep Herders for NWA New Zealand. And apparently they were like a really violent act. And uh, when they came to the WWF in 89, uh, they kind of changed their violence to more of the comedic style, which is what I liked. And that includes, you know, the forearms, and them just walking around the ring, just, uh, getting nuts. And just, I remember just being kind of like animals and just, I don't know, it just was really funny. And so it stood out to me. And uh, it sounds like, from what I was reading, they weren't really around that long in <laughs> WWF, but... They had a lasting impression. Yeah, but they just stood out to me. I mean, people. I would, I would, on a recess, I'd do that, and people know what I was doing. <laughs> so, the forearm thing. So, I have a funny story about them. I remember in the Royal Rumble, yep. they were fighting each other. I think the first one came out, Luke came out, and then Butch came out. And then so, one of them gets grabbed and thrown right over, and they just keep marching with their forearms up around the <laughs> ring. Around the outside, and then just go back to the curtains. It was so funny. 
Our mom was like, yeah, I might have seen that one, actually. Our mom yeah. was like, oh, he must have been sick. <laughs> 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 yeah, they licked each other's armpits and head. Yeah, they are just nuts, man. They had their tank tops with the cargo short or pants on. Yeah. So my number two, let me see if I can get this to work. <laughs> Their demolition. Mm-hmm. That was my number one. Oh, okay. Uh, demolition was actually held the title for 470 days, the longest ever. Uh, Axe and Smasher. Uh, they had the guillotine tag team move hold. That they would place the opponent on one of their knees. They take a knee and put the opponent on it on their back. The other would jump off the top rope and hit him in the neck. That was so tight. Yeah. <laughs> the guillotine, yeah. That was cool. Then they brought along a third party member, Crush. Yeah. And like he was some Hawaiian dude at first. And <laughs> then the, then he started dressing up like the demolition. Do you remember who the demolition's manager was? No. Mr. Fuji. Was it? He had the red uh, face paint too. <laughs> That's heck of funny. And then he left the demolition to go... Um, Go to the powers of pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it? Barbarian, and I can't remember the other one's name. Yeah. And he left them because he thought that they were uh, superior, but actually they were false. They were wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I like how they dressed up as uh, with like the B- the BDSM BDSM attire, and they had the the face paint. What is what really got me? The half gray, half white, red. Yeah, kind of like Kiss. Mm-hmm. It was cool. It was cool to see as a kid, and that's what stuck to me, and that's why I picked them as my number one. Yeah. You have anything else to say about Demolition? No, you summed it up pretty good. Have you guys heard of the Brothers of Destruction? Yeah. Oh, man. Kane and Undertaker. Yeah. The Undertaker and Kane. Next. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was uh, looking at stuff online, like doing some research, and they said, "What is, what what's uh, more scary than the Undertaker? <laughs> the Undertaker and Kane." <laughs> it was echo funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what more can you say? I mean, it's the Undertaker and Kane, two behemoths. I mean, you get the two of them in the ring; they're unstoppable. It's just a matter of getting them in the ring and. Working together. No <laughs> misunderstandings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Kane buried Undertaker a few times. <laughs> and Undertaker burned Kane when they were little. Yeah, that's true. And that's why he had to wear that mask, but all of a sudden his face is healed. Yeah, true. <laughs> what are you suggesting? <laughs> that uh, <laughs> WWE... Through extensive cosmetic <laughs> surgery, <laughs> skin grafts. Now the only thing wrong with him is that eye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really. a different color. It seems to heal whenever he does his speeches for the Libertarian Party, too. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Maybe he puts in a contact to make it look normal. That's probably what he does, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> or or the, the WWF has a serum that he just takes shots and he gets completely healed for an hour. <laughs> and then he goes back to normal. That could be, too. That's not far that's, at all. That's very likely. <laughs> All right, I, I, I wrote down a couple of things, but really, well, you don't need to say anything. They're just beasts. Yeah. So that's my number one. Those are two of my favorite characters. Put them together, they're, they're my favorite tag team. So uh, my number one, as I said earlier, when Nick mentioned his, I think, two, was uh, the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors. Uh, another one as a kid, man. I mean, I just remember these dudes that came out, pads and spikes, and just looked sick. I think I even had a poster and uh, again didn't really watch wrestling maybe once in a while on Saturdays I, I caught it but I just those guys were sick they just they had a different look uh, one had a mohawk the other one had like the inverted mohawk where he had <laughs> just a side, like a two side hawk <laughs> face painted um, and then uh, actually just the other day I saw on Netflix there was a documentary about them so I watched that and uh, it was pretty cool man they, they were they were bouncers at this one super rowdy bar and they just got to fight some people and stuff mm-hmm. and, and then uh, I think a wrestling manager or someone said hey you need to come to this gym and, and come train and they went to this gym and worked and, and, and kind of got got some show time and I guess uh, people said when when you fought the ro- road warriors in the wrestling match you were really fighting I mean they were really trading blow for blow they were going at you full bore 
It's the only way they knew to do it. They just were. <laughs> Uh, they they trained at this place called the gym that I guess a lot of wrestlers ended up uh, training at uh, as far as working out bodybuilding. There's a lot of athlete athlete pictures on the wall there and stuff. So it's in Minnesota, I think. But anyways, yeah, they're just they're just rad. Uh, I think really the football the football pads and the spikes are what really did it, but they're actually pretty good too. So that's my number one. Yep. So my number one is gonna have to be my two favorite characters combined, the Mega Powers. Brandon said it earlier, Macho Man and Hulk Hogan, even though Demolition was around for a lot longer than they were, just the whole aspect of it, of having Macho Man and Hulk Hogan team up, was amazing. Yeah, it was. So Macho Man's my favorite character, Hulk Hogan's my second favorite, so that's my number one tag team. I found a video of Kane touting Ron Paul. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it later. I'm sure it's pretty funny. Hmm. His real name's like his Glenn, his Glenn, Glenn Jacob. Perry. Glenn oh. Jacob. Oh, I thought it was Glenn Perry. There's another guy we know named Glenn Perry. That's probably why I got it <laughs> mixed up. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a big libertarian guy. He's all yeah. he's all on Ron Paul's nuts. And there was actually an article uh, saying that he was actually going to seek some sort of uh, political office too. I don't know exactly what he's going to be running for. Oh but. wow. Jesse the body's assistant. Yeah. So did the Undertaker and Kane share a mother or dad? I well, think. <laughs> I think the story is mother. Because I think Kane's supposed to be the son of Paul Bearer. Correct answer. But I don't. No. Well, <laughs> that's the story. I know. We're having a discussion. That's awesome. Very sophisticated <laughs> discussion. Can you play Minecraft, Trace? <laughs> I think that's the story, though. What are these guys <laughs> even talking about? Yeah. <laughs> uh, do we have any honorable mentions? Oh, yeah. I've got uh, the Nasty Boys. Oh, yeah. Boss Gags and Kevin Brothers. I had them written down, but I lost my list. Uh, but they were the result. They, they actually influenced me and Brandon to lick each other's armpits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I also had the the Twin Towers, uh, the Natural Disasters, Earthquake, and Typhoon. Mm -hmm. uh, earthquake was actually the uh, Damien the Snake's demise. <laughs> Jake the Snake was tied up in the ropes, and Earthquake dragged the snake into the middle of the ring and did his earthquake squat <laughs> on it. He was still in the bag. The snake was still in the bag, and of course he didn't take it out because he would have been killed by it, but that just... Broke my heart. Yeah, it he, sucks. Yeah, that. He, I can't believe he killed a snake like that. <laughs> it's with Damien. And um, I can't think of any more honorable mentions right now. Hollywood Blondes? I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm, only reason I know about them is from that documentary on Stone Cold. Oh, man. What about Too Cool? No. Too cool. With uh, Grandmaster Sexy and Spy no. Too Hot. Yeah. Gra Grandmaster Sexy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. The worm. That's got to be the most, I don't know, the most powerless It's, a, it's yeah. a poor man's people elbow. Yeah. <laughs> the most electrifying move in sports in human history. <laughs> now, I also had the Hart Foundation, Bret yes. Hart, and uh, Jim Nyhart. But the only reason he didn't make my list is because I don't like Jim Nyhart. I don't like him either. Or his daughter, right? Oh, man. <laughs> and then the, the, the Four Horsemen uh, with Art uh, Anderson. Arn Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give it up to Jimmy Hart, though. He's so entertaining. Yeah, he is. I don't know if he's related to the Hart Foundation. I don't know. He might be. But he's um, very entertaining to watch. He, um, I forgot uh, on my list I had him down. He was managing one of the people on my list. Mega Powers. No, that was Elizabeth, I thought. No. That was Jimmy yeah, Hart. He's, uh, it was him and, or him and Elizabeth. Okay. Because when they split, Hart went to Hogan and... Um, Homegirl went to the neutral corner. Was it my... Jimmy Hart in Hulk Hogan's band? Oh man, I don't know. I, I don't even know if he had a band. I remember we watched a Battle Royale where when WF WWF first came out, where we first started watching it. That's what a Royal Rumble used to be called. The, yeah, and uh, basically he he was the first man in the ring. He went and hid under the ring. Everyone forgot about him, and then when there were two people left. And they were struggling at the edge of the ropes. 
he came out, weaseled his way under the ring, and tipped them both over in one. Yeah, that was heck of funny. And we were like, why doesn't everybody do that? <laughs> now we know. Anybody else think of any uh, honorable mentions? Yeah, uh, I, I just looked it up. Uh, my brother Aaron had a CD. Was, <laughs> the Wrestling Boot Band with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> and uh, Hulk Hogan was uh, the singer, I believe he played guitar. And Jimmy Hart uh, and Linda, um, Hulk Hogan's then wife, were in the band too. Wow. Yeah. I think I remember uh, seeing a picture. He had like a, a, a piano necktie on. Jimmy Hart did in, in a picture of the band. So that's funny that I just randomly remember that. But. Didn't he have something about the patrol, the, the beach patrol yeah. or something like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Uh, Thunder in Paradise? <laughs> it was... Uh, and that was the TV show he was on. Hulk Hogan. And it was American May or whatever was the song. Well, that was his theme song. Yeah. Or is that what you're talking about? Uh, the yeah, I, yeah. Beach Patrol is a song Patrol, too. Yeah, that's yeah. the one I've heard. Uh, the songs are written by. Uh, yeah, actually, their songs are all written by Hulk Hogan and Jimmy Hart. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, percussion he played. It says. Huh? I thought he'd play the megaphone. Vocal, <laughs> percussion, and effects. Nice. And Hulk Hogan played the uh, bass. Yeah. Anyways. YouTube Beach Patrol. <laughs> yeah, used, yeah. I'm going to go find I, it. I, I, I think Hogan he found Beach that Patrol. in high school. I think it's when he had that CD. So. I think that's probably why that's I, why why I heard it. Because yeah. Ann showed it to me. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just going to give a shout out to The Shield. Yeah, they're they're they've only been around for about a year or so, but I I think they work really well together. They're really really good heels. Uh, I, I like I like their style. Like I said, they work well together. Each one of them kind of has like a defined role, so I'm just gonna give a shout out to them. Dean Ambrose, <laughs> he is funny. And the the whole shtick of uh, walking to the ring through the audience rather than coming down the the ramp. Echo, bro, I like Charlie. <laughs> I like how, and I noticed it a lot with Gold Dust today, but other people do it as well. Uh, they know they're fighting him. They know they're, they they're going to fight the Shield, and the Shield's coming out. But yet, when they hear the music, they get all freaked out, like they don't know where it's coming from and what's happening. And they come out of the stands, and they're all like blown away that they're, they knew they know they're fighting now. So, yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, they always seem to come from the same vicinity. It's like to the right of the uh, the announcer's table. It's like where the, where the camera can see it from its usual perspective. And then the Dean Ambrose got his hair messed up by a fan when he <laughs> walked through the crowd. That's funny. You know, like, like they get annoyed if like anyone touches them. That's that's another thing I like about them. Like they're they're not going through there to to gain fans. They're going through to to show that they don't give a <laughs> heck about fans. <laughs> Dean Ambrose's face reminds me of uh, like the bad guys in like eighties like teen <laughs> movies or something. The smirks he makes, or like the bad guy in Karate Kid, or something <laughs> like that. Just the face is like. <laughs> it's Does anyone know what time it is? What time is it? It's Cool Picks time. Oh, man. oh yeah. Yes. This is going to be an interesting edition of Cool Picks because it's Sunday at like eleven o'clock at night. So all but one of the games has concluded, so we're going to be able to give you an update as to whether these cool picks were correct. <laughs> all right. Cool picks time. <laughs> First one up, Saints against the Falcons. Fact. <laughs> Falcons are the number one source of protein in Louisiana. Do you know what the number two source of protein is? Alligator. Uh, crawdads. Uh, 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 <laughs> shrimp. Humans. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> so, they're in Atlanta this, this week. Since the Saints are on the road this game, they will have to get their protein from human falcons. <laughs> <laughs> Going to Saints on this one. You are correct. Yes. <laughs> one for one. Uh, speaking of falconeering, as we as on the last podcast, mm -hmm. I saw an episode of Family Guy where Peter was a falconeer, uh -huh. and he he told him to go fetch stuff, and he would go fetch his food. It was heck of funny. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Pittsburgh Steelers against the Cleveland Browns. Battle of the douchebags here. <laughs> <laughs> this game is going to be so lame and boring. <laughs> This game is going to be more boring than a Deftones concert. <laughs> oh, that's pretty boring. Uh, the only winner here is obviously the notorious Tommy B and the West Town Boys. Is that your pick? That's my pick. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> so who won that game? The Steelers. Okay. I, I didn't pick a winner for that team, for that game. Wait, how, how do you not pick a winner? Isn't this for, for a pool? <laughs> yeah. It's only three dollars. So you just give up? You just donate three dollars? I go. I go for the entertainment factor here. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you lost that one. Okay. Tampa Bay Bucks and the Detroit Lions. What an upset last week! But guess who saw it coming? I did. The Bucks humiliated all of those Falconeers. Are they going to do it again? You think so? I don't know. Only time will tell. Of course not. They're going to humiliate all the lion tamers out there. Go Bucks. You were correct. Oh, man. Yeah, again. <laughs> nice. All right. Viking against Green Bay Packers. I'm going to get a little unorthodox Jew here. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong last week. The Vikings got dive bombed by the Seahawks. Serves them right, though, you know? Now... <laughs> Packers, their colors are gold and green, right? What does gold and green remind you of? Zelda. Yeah. Athletics. Uh-huh. Gold and green, <laughs> what does that remind you of? The A's. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's athletics, sorry. Green and gold, money, and gold coins. Who loves money and gold? Vikings? Jews. <laughs> 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 so Packers all the way. That game actually ended in a tie. So. Oh, okay. I guess you neither won nor lost. Chargers and the Chiefs. Do I smell an upset here? I smell my farts right now. Oh, I'm oh, crazy over here. Let me take off my Junos. <laughs> <laughs> nope, no upset. Chiefs. Wrong. Oh, they lost. <laughs> the Chiefs lost. Chargers 41, Chiefs 38. It's because the lightning bolts hit the Indians. Oh. <laughs> Bears and the Rams. Oh, man. Come on. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Rams. Oh, wow. Yeah, you got that one. Okay. Panthers and the Dolphins. I got an insider informant tip on this one. Mm. But uh, let me go with my summation first it's pretty simple though <laughs> last week we discussed that the carolinas flip-flop between north and south wishy-washy right <laughs> so if they're the south carolina panthers this game they will be traveling 431 <laughs> miles by bus to miami if they're the north carolina panthers they'll be <laughs> flying 670 five miles to Miami. <laughs> Using the Tricipsi formula, we can figure out the winner. <laughs> the formula states, if the number of football players in a combined transport device is greater than 9% of the combined person's in said transport device, and the average SPTD, speed of transport device, is less than or equal to 75 miles per hour, we get X, number of revolutions per mile per hour. Now, if we compare X, and it is less than the ratio of FRGS, to UNMR, froggies to unitards, <laughs> retarded unicorns. <laughs> they are traveling from uh, the field of eternity to Mortar on the second Wednesday <laughs> of December 2012. We get a true quote unquote statement which says dolphins win. Now, if we take X and it is greater than or equal to the ratio of FRGS to UNMR, Froggies to retarded unicorns that are traveling to Mount Olympus from Acme Acres on the first Saturday of March 2001, we get a quote-unquote false statement, which says Panthers win. Either way, Dolphins are going to win. Need further proof? The informant called me and said that there's an open case of bullying for the Dolphins. <laughs> going on right now. This is going to boost morale in Miami. 
causing a win for the Dolphins. Dolphins lost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Oh. My source says the same thing. The Dolphins lost. Oh. What the hell, Brad? <laughs> the secret informant. Oh, I mean, I got to call that secret informant. <laughs> uh, Jets and the Ravens. Uh, Ravens have home court advantage. Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> Going with the Ravens. Yep, yep, yep. You got it. All right. Jacksonville Jaguars, the Jaguars, and the Texans. Another ambiguous football team are the Jaguars from Jacksonville, New Hampshire, <laughs> or Jacksonville, Montana. Florida. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Another big cat being wishy washy. Yeah. So he's, it's, there's a Jacksonville in Florida? Correct. Do you have a pen? Yeah. All right. <laughs> making some notes real quick. <laughs> Going with the Texans. <laughs> Jacksonville won. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Titans and the Raiders. Do you know that the Titans have a sister team that plays for college called the Volunteers? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know the Raiders also have a sister team that plays football at Oakland City College? <laughs> sister team? <laughs> <laughs> Their team name for Oakland is the Cucarachas de Lutadoras. Do I have to even translate that for you guys? <laughs> The looting cockroaches. <laughs> Fitting. Now, based on the two sister teams, I'm going to have to give it to Oakland this time. As much as it despises the Raiders, their sister team is way superior than Tennessee's volunteers. <laughs> you were wrong. Oh, man. <laughs> Shucks. Yeah. Next time. Colts and the Cardinals. Oh, why haven't we seen this before? The Colts are so contradictory. Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> Who rides Colts? Cowboys. Cowboys. Indian Apples. <laughs> Indian Colts. How can that be? Wishy washy team. <laughs> Cardinals all the way. I think you got that one. Yeah, they won 40, 40 to 11. Cowboys and the Giants, come on. <laughs> Cowboys. I don't know. What do you have? Dallas won. I think Troy Eggman had a couple. Like, That's what I'm talking in, about. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's safe to assume that Steve Young is a million dollars poorer now. He is. He didn't keep up to his promise that Joe Montana was going to come to the field. Yeah. <laughs> he paid off uh, Jerry Rice's uh, estate. <laughs> Broncos and the Patriots. You know who sucks as a singer? Hmm. John Denver. I think the Patriots are going to take this. You need another reason? Clam chowder. <laughs> Patriots. So, what's crazy about that one is we were watching, uh, I believe, the first half of that game before the wrestling, and I think Denver was up like 27 to 0 or mm -hmm. something. Ready just like that? Uh, New England had winning 34 to 31 in overtime. That's what I'm talking so about. I, I, it kind of sucks that we didn't get to watch that game because it seems like it would have been pretty epic. But I don't know. Tom Brady's cracking. And uh, he probably had his chowder. Dang. Yeah, he had chowder at halftime. It's like a spinach. Okay. <laughs> spinach. 49ers and Washington Redskins. This is the star pick of the week. And there you have it, folks. My picks of the, my cool picks of the week. Wait. <laughs> oh, the star pick. When I offer a star pick, I'm laying, laying my sports center expertise on the line <laughs> and guaranteeing that my pick will win beyond a shadow of a doubt. If I am wrong, whoever calls me out on my incorrect star pick gets five hundred dollars in Monopoly money. <laughs> I'm going with the 49ers. That's the one game we don't know about, so I might have to call you up tomorrow. Either way, I win, because if the 49ers win, I'll be happy. If they lose, then I get 500. But come on, the Redskins. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, Things happen, though. 
So uh, I was I was logging it. You got seven right, and uh, one you <laughs> one of them you didn't make a decision, and then you got five wrong. Uh, okay. One of them was a tie, so I mean that doesn't count either way. Yeah, but no one's gonna guess tie, so yeah. that doesn't really count. So so I, hey, se- seven and four with one unanswered. <laughs> <laughs> so not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. You should go uh, to Vegas. Try to make it as a uh, sports gambler. Should I go by bus or by plane? Depends if you want to go to the Field of Eternity or Acme Acres. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> you should uh, keep your cool picks, the, your rationale behind them to yourself, though, because then everyone will start doing it and the bookies will get onto your game. Mm-hmm. Hopefully the bookies don't listen to this. <laughs> Alright, so that'll do it for this episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Nick. Maddie. Happy hunting, guys. <laughs>